Shep, Shep, Shep. All right, buddy. Here we go. This is your 22 off. It's not your best pass, but I picked this pass because it indicates or it exemplifies some of the things that I think are fundamentally happening with your skein. So let's talk about the gates, specifically the gate pullout. Uh, I'm gonna let this play through real quick. And I want you to notice something. It's not a super smooth pullout. And what I want to do when I back this up is I want to just make a quick note about a lot of people put a lot of emphasis on the gate pullout. I don't necessarily think that the gate pullout and all that setup is completely necessary to run the pass perfectly. But what I do think is if you do the right movements at the gate, meaning the right mechanics, the right rhythm, the right timing, um, then you're way more likely to make the right movements in the course. So what I want you to specifically look at, first off, when you first, when you go to make your move out for the pull out for the gates, um, I do want to make a note that uh, you got the reverse grip going. I know you know that. That's a left foot forward grip, but you're a righty. So we'll get to that later. But I think that has credence for what I'm going to talk about with this, uh, with this specific fundamental, which is athletic stance. So notice you make your move out. And you move over the left, move over the left edge of the ski. It looks really good. Um, your shoulders, I'd like them to be a little bit more open to the boat, but I'm not too worried about that right now. And you just start to load to make the move out, and what happens is right here, see that move where your ski starts to shoot in front of you. That happens actually in the course as well. But if it's happening here at the gate pullout, and you can notice that the spray in this area, right here, gets steeper for a moment and then right there so you get steep and then the ski has to flatten out trim out and you've kind of lost everything because the ski squirted out in front of you so basically you lost your outbound direction and momentum because you allowed you weren't able to stay stacked over your ski and you let the ski get in front of you right there and a lot of that has to do in my opinion with the orientation of your chest and your shoulders but having said that the pull the start of the pullout was great so what I'd like to see more of is a little bit more of a progressive move into this pullout so that you build into a little more progression and then you build out of this cut a little bit more progressively as well instead of that jerk right there. You see the spray is low here and then a few frames later you see that the spray is actually quite a bit steeper here and then a few frames later you see the spray is flat again right here. So that indicates that there was a spike in your load on the ski and on your body right there. So in, that's indicative of what's happening in the course. If we watch this through <clears throat> on the gate glide right here, uh, you notice it's not bad. But what I'd like to see more of is I'd like to ski this, see the ski instead of up like this. I'd like to see the ski a little bit flatter. I'd like to see the water breaking on this glide right here at your front boot, the toe of your front boot. So what's happened here is you can see this line of your shoulders to your hips and then your hips to your feet. There's a bit of a, a um, there's a, a back, a butt back stance. So what that ultimately does is that puts your center of mass right here over your back foot. So the only way to trim out your ski on the glide, as well as the only way to keep your ski trim here through this first part of the pullout and ultimately in the course is to have your body instead of in the stance that you have instead of here where your hips are back over your back foot right here the best way is to get your knee over your front toe and then your femur will be here and then your body will be right here and as you can see if you get in that orientation from your center of gravity down that gravity pull will basically be through your front foot instead of where it is now, which is back here through your back foot. All right, so that's what I see. That's the main deficiency. I think that permeates everything that you do because you see right here, you're already trying to make your move in from a, a back stance. So you're turning from the tail of the ski, not a big deal, but you end up seeing that 
although you're in a pretty good balanced position, your butt is back and you're driving kind of through that back leg. Um, and what ends up happening a lot is you just hold your cuts too long. Now this is 22 off. I know you can get away with that, but ideally the goal is to run 28 and even in the 32 off. And what I mean by pulling too long is look at this cut. So you're past the second white water. Here's the white water here. That's the line of the white water. And you're already past the second white water and you're still on the cutting edge and your ski doesn't even roll to flat until, mm, I don't know, I'd say this is probably six feet outside white water. So that is going to set you up on a late and fast rhythm for the whole course. Fortunately, it's 22 off, pretty easy for you, and you know how to manage and cope with it. But you see right here, because of that, you're already pushing through your back leg to try to get the ski to come through. Now that's ideal in certain instances, but not here. Now, athletic stance, you're trying to stay over your front foot, but you see just because you turned here on the back of the ski, you'd never gave yourself a chance to get your body back stacked over your front foot. So what we see here is instead of your body being here, hips, chest, and uh, you know head, having your body over your front foot just a little bit more, a little bit more stacked, we see that obviously the knee, the shin is perpendicular, which means your butt's back behind your back foot. So the force is going through your back leg. And that's the resulting cause of that is right here. You see you're kind of already back and letting the ski move in front of you. So you make the move to stay over it. And that's why you end up cutting too long. And all of that stems from coming through the finish and not being able to stay over your front foot as you move into the wakes. All of that stems from not being able to feel it back here at your pullout for the gates. It, that's why the gate pullout is so important. And that's why people um, inadvertently put effort and time into this gate sequencing because it's not necessarily about nailing the gate. I don't think that's as critical as everybody thinks. It's about nailing the muscle memory. It's about re uh, reinforcing good movement here where there's no buoys coming at you, where the consequences are low, such that you'll naturally make the right movements in the course when you're not thinking about it. So if you can work on this gate pullout, that's what I want you to focus on next couple of rides. Then smoothing this out, if you can work on that stance and being progressive in, you're already almost too leaned over right there. What I'd say is to nail this, you need to progress into this pullout so that by this point right here where the ski's starting to jerk out in front of you, you're you've got this amount of lean that you've got right here. So that amount of lean, you need to save that for when you're just outside whitewater right here. I think you just nailed, you got uh, achieved that lean too soon. And then what happens is you build load on the ski and you know that you're either gonna get whipped out too far, too far, too fast, or you're gonna have to let the ski squirt in front of you. And that's exactly what happens here, but that's also exactly what happens in the course. So you can nail this pullout right here, Athletic stance, chest a little bit more towards the boat. Instead of here, I'd like to see your shoulders just a little bit more level. And I'd like to see them facing the boat. That'll make it a little easier to progress into this outbound cut this direction. And it's going to make it a little easier to progress onto the cut and progress off of the cut instead of that jerk right there. And you see it in the spray. And then it'll be a quite a bit easier to get stacked in this glide over your ski where instead of your body being back behind and, and, and in line with your back foot here, uh, your body could be more here, which is where you want it. Let's give you a head too. Everybody likes to have a head. Hold on. There we go. That's where we want your body. If you can achieve that, then your ski almost guarantee will be more flat. And that's what we want because you want to move into a carving cutting position from a flat ski, not from a tail ski. All right. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to leave it at that. We're almost 10 minutes in. Um, short and sweet athletic stance. It's the base of the water ski pyramid for the flow point method. And it is uh, the base of the fundamental pyramid for a reason. Because if you can nail that, a lot of other problems go away. 
So, Shep, that's it. Let's work on this athletic stance. And it all starts at the gate. All right, buddy. Hope that helps.